frustrating. I would, to be fair, this is something that happens rarely in my experience. In the three years that I've worked for the KRF, there have only been two magicians who decided to go crazy on us. But um, it is very frustrating when people voice their opinions about the JRF in such a negative way. Because you discover that the more things you say in response, no matter how positive they are, no matter how well you explain yourself or why this protocol was done this way or how we're not fake and we're not liars and we don't hate everybody, the more you try to explain and regain your footing, the more they latch on and try and drag you down. Because in the end, they've already formed their belief about the JREP and what we do in skeptics in general. And there's nothing, nothing much that you can do to alter it, especially if they have a hidden agenda. So you think it's better off just to ignore those people? Yes, it is much better to ignore people like that, who are clearly just attention-seeking publicity hounds. All right, so two more things and then uh, we move on. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about recent challenges, current challenges, and the name that actually stand out to you? Sure. Um, I did mention Natalia Voronikova, who's a Russian biolocation woman. She's a very interesting case. She has all of the credentials required, which is great. Uh, another recent one was Rosemary Hunter, who's one of my favorites because I think she's one of the really weird abilities that we actually tested. She was the woman who could make people urinate their pants with the power of the mind. <laughs> and it, every time someone complains about uh, media presence requirements to me, it just it kind of amuses me a little bit because that woman had an article in the newspaper about her ability to make people do that, and that's just fascinating to me. Another interesting one is the live test that we had from last year, Connie Summit, and she could douse four playing cards that were double enveloped and hidden from her. So you would roll the die and it came up 10, and she would douse for the 10. And that was really interesting. And I was, I was actually really happy to be a part of that one because it's, in my experience, again, it's rare for a challenger to show up for a live test. And I do want to say thank you to Anita. I'm not sure where she is now, but thank you, Anita, for doing this. It is, it is a rarity. We've tried to set these things up before, and sometimes it doesn't come through. People change their minds, or they get nervous, or maybe they lose faith in their ability. But we oftentimes just never hear from them again. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I mean, we try really, really hard to try to have a live demonstration, a live uh, challenge here. Uh, we're not able to for various reasons, which we might talk about later. Um, how excited about the future changes in the challenge, the direction it's going? I am really excited about the places that we plan to take the challenge. It, it's so great to me to be able to see the evolution of this thing, to have been reading about it when I was 10, and then become a part of it and watched it change. And now I can see a future where all of these doors open and we are able to do so much more and be so much more in the public view, and I am so glad to be around for that part. Yeah, and I could not do this without Adam.